Hello, uh, I'm Simon King from CERT. This is a short presentation about the New Horizons project and CERT's part in delivering that. Okay, so first thing is to talk to you a little bit about what corporate social responsibility is. Um, it can be defined in four ways, but overall it's about um, the commitment by business to act ethically and contribute to economic development. Um, and we do that in four ways. Um, working in partnership with local communities, uh, socially responsible investment, uh, developing relationships with employees and customers, and environmental protection and sustainability. And CERT would focus largely on working in partnership with local communities. Okay, just to give you a bit of an example of how this works in practice, um, Tesco's are a very good example of corporate social responsibility. They operate obviously globally, um, but have a whole range of corporate social responsibility policies. Um, and some examples here of what they do, uh, they more than doubled the number of community champions across the group uh, from 270 uh, to over 650. Uh, community champions are people that get involved in working in the communities, so there's a clear investment there. Uh, they donated 64.3 million to charities and good causes across the groups, so across the nation, that amount of money went in. Um, and they provided access to education for children and adults on low incomes across the world. This is how Tesco's approach corporate social responsibility. Okay, so how we formed relationships. In the early stage of the project, we found that if we were going to be successful, we needed to find out some key information. Uh, we needed to know what businesses were willing to offer, uh, how much time they could commit to, uh, did they already work in the community, and could we get more from them? Uh, and also, if they didn't want to help, then why was that the case? Okay, so what we looked at was how we would form um, the creation of lasting relationships through manageable, time-saving offers of support. Um, so we put a survey out to people to find out what we could offer. Um, we did uh, a mail out to 1,800 businesses in East Riding. We did an electronic survey to 600 Chamber of Commerce members. Um, we had a very few respondees, um, but we got some good information from them um, not as much as we wanted, but some good information that we could take forwards. Okay, so some of the stuff that we found out. Um, businesses that already support the communities aren't necessarily interested in doing more um, or telling us what they do, um, and they thought that it was quite a private thing that they didn't want everybody to know about, so that was the first thing. Um, often small businesses or sole traders um, do not consider what they do as corporate social responsibility, particularly if it's just an individual. So they would potentially say, I do lots of work in the community, it's not a corporate thing, it's a personal thing. Um, businesses are struggling to find time to do anything other than pay the, to work and pay their own bills. Um, so it's very difficult to get them out of that environment and do something for the communities. Um, and there are many businesses that have to continue, uh, sorry, that haven't continued to offer lots of support um, and so to get more from them is very difficult. But there's lots of good stuff that goes on, uh, which was very encouraging. Okay, so our approach to businesses, having found out that information, was to look for friendly guidance and support on phone and email for community groups that we could find, and for them to pass on information about employment law and best practice, uh, providing feedback on business decisions and marketing campaigns, uh, to provide discounts on services for the organisation and for their volunteers. Uh, and whilst these are, might only seem small gestures, in reality, what, mean, what it means to the community groups is that they get exactly what they want, and that would be our approach to this project. So, what we did, we found the businesses that were interested to help, listen to what they could offer, listen to what the community groups could offer, and try to put them together. And some of the results of that were that we had uh, graphic designers produce poster templates, we had solicitors and accountants opened up sources of information, newsletters, bulletins uh, that previously they only offered out to their existing private clients. We had larger firms offering to do uh, mentoring and project management for smaller businesses. We had retailers and, and in particular one bus company uh, that offered prime advertising space for free. Uh, we had opticians, printers, web designers, and a whole host of organisations offering large discounts on services. Um, we had experts in accountancy uh, and accountancy software that agreed to help people set up software on the computers and give them guidance through it, all for free. 
Okay, so here's a, a case study. Um, this is Community Lift in Beverly, a community transport organisation. We met with them uh, in June this year, and what we needed to do was establish what help they needed, and what came out from our discussions was that they might need some help with um, day-to-day -day management. We had one chief executive running a very large charity, um, and also that they might need some help with a website. So it was search task then to go out and find businesses that might be able to do this. So the issue that cropped up was about websites and whether people were getting to their websites. And so we found an IT specialist that came in and helped them do that, and that's an ongoing relationship. We also found um, a mentor at a large confection company who offered to act as a mentor, or a critical friend as we called it, to help them by phone and email about day-to-day -day business things. Okay, so what happened with this is that this wasn't lots of businesses offering lots of services for free. This was people offering their time and expertise to people that needed it. Um, there's not going to be lots of money changing hands, um, there's not going to be paid for services. It's all free, but it's about that pro bono support and a lasting relationship. So, through the course of the project, we found lots of unexpected outcomes. Um, we found that there was a need to address marketing issues in the third sector and that many organisations didn't feel that they had opportunities to get the marketing out there. Um, we developed micro-volunteering opportunities and worked with an organisation called Help From Home who do micro-volunteering on a wide scale who produce guides that we then got out to the sector. And also, an unexpected outcome was that we found many organisations were actually very competent and were able to deal very happily with business issues and that were very self-sufficient, which was very positive. Okay, so story so far and, and time at the loose ends, we've got lots of pattern going on between the sectors. Uh, we have open-ended offers from businesses that we can uh, offer up to the sector still and we'll continue to do that. We have unused offers from businesses that again we'll keep trying to, to plug. Uh, and we also have the legacy of the project, which is that we've created databases of all these offers and interested businesses um, that again will be promoted out to the sector. Okay, so what we've learned. We've learned that corporate social responsibility is a lot more than donations, uh, it's a lot more than just painting fences and community centres, it's about offering something that's tangible. Um, we've also found out that even the smallest gestures that don't take a lot of time can mean a lot to a charity or a voluntary group. Um, and the expectations from the third sector must not be assumed. The need comes from the sector and we need to find businesses to fill that need. Okay, contact details on the screen there. And um, if you have any further questions or are interested in anything we've talked about, please give us a call.